You knew it was the end. Saw my brethren all dressed in white. They didn't know me as I stood there and cried. I knew the tears would run down forever. There was no sound of glory for me. Just the sound of his displeasure. But when I did awake, I was so relieved to see the sun smiling through my window like his son smiling at me. Oh, when I did awake, I was so relieved to see there was still some chance for me. Brother, what a nightmare. You really had to be there, yeah. Brother, what a nightmare. It was awful, y'all, cause I wasn't saved. Got to the wire and I had to misbehave. I couldn't run and I couldn't hide in the presence of his anger. I was a pitiful sight. I woke this morning in an awful sweat. I took a moment out to catch my breath. Cause when you dream about that lake of fire You just want to know more and more To be all he desires Yes, when I did awake I was so relieved to see The sun smiling through my window Like his sun smiling at me Oh, when I did awake I was so relieved to see there was still some chance for me Brother, what a nightmare You really had to be there When I did awake I was so relieved to see The sun smiling through my window Like his son smiling at me Oh, when I did awake so relieved to see there was still some chance for me brother what a nightmare you really had to be there yeah brother what a Hello. Hello. Hey, we are muted. Okie dokie. We muted. Good evening, class. My name is Marsha Land, and I will be your moderator for this evening's class. Welcome to another lecture given by the members of the North Carolina Zoom class. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organizations. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result 
of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in any good dictionary or encyclopedia will show proof that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language had any letters or characters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our father and his son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be obtained by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him this tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Our primary constitutional objectives and aims 
of the Bible class are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And 10, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. We will begin this evening's class with the prayer by Dr. Roxanne Russo and the scripture will be read by Dr. Katonia Parks and the scripture lesson will be 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Dr. Russo. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Let us all bow our hearts and minds unto Yahshua. Oh, Yahshua, just thank you for allowing us to have class tonight. And uh, thank you for your salvation and for pulling us out of darkness. Thank you for being our true husband, our provider, our protector. Um, thank you for clothing us with your divine attributes and with that whole armor. And thank you for prote protecting us from the devil and his deception. But most of all, thank you, Yahshua, for your love and your mercy and your grace. With that, let us all declare hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Good evening, class. Good evening. Uh, the scripture lesson, First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. And I'll be using the correct and original names. That's First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of Yahweh so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, and that the day should overtake you as a thief. You are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For Yahweh has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. 
And we beseech you, brethren, acknowledge them which laboreth among you and are over you in Yahweh, and admonish you, and esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now, now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient towards all. See that none render evil for evil unto anyone, but ever following that which is good, both among yourselves and all and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything giving thanks, for this is the will of Yahweh and Yahshua the Messiah concerning you. Quench not the spirit, do not neglect the prophecies. Prove all things, hold fast to that which is good, abstain from all appearance, appearances of evil, and the very Elohim of peace sanctify you wholly, so that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by Yahweh that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Savior, Yahshua Messiah, be with you. First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Ro Roxanne Russo and Dr. Katonia Parks. Before I call on our first speaker, our readers for tonight will be Dr. Katonia Parks and Dr. Amir Coleman. Uh, to our Zoom participants, please stay muted and cameras blocked unless you are called on to speak. And to our speakers, a sign will appear on the screen when there are five minutes remaining of your allotted time. Please acknowledge you have seen the sign. Thank you. For our first speaker, it is an honor and a pleasure to call on Dr. Greg Preston from our Ithaca, New York class. Dr. Preston. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, <clears throat> it's a pleasure to be with you and I appreciate uh, having this opportunity. Uh, still takes a little getting used to, to talking with nobody else in the room, but um, I guess we're all getting used to that with Zoom. The, uh, this class is really phenomenal. And I was listening to the moderation and just thinking uh, about how much uh, knowledge is represented in the moderation and uh, how little of that is actually reflected in what the world believes and, and what the world practices. Now, uh, we've had this scripture read, so I think I'll just start uh, with the scripture and see, see where this goes. So could somebody just read 1 Thessalonians 5 and 1? 1 Thessalonians 5 and 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. Okay, you so, so sorry, I'm, I'm probably going to interrupt you quite a bit. Um, okay. You know, we pick up this Bible and we read the Bible. And a lot of times, certainly before our, I mean, before I came into class, I never read the Bible. But um, you don't necessarily know just because you read the words doesn't mean we understand exactly what uh, what's being talked about. And uh, this is a school. And really, when we come down here, we come down here to learn. Now, uh, would somebody just read the first aim for me? We'll just start off really slow. First aim, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim, 
as he really is and actually exists. Matthew okay. 20. Okay, thank you. Um, so, you know, a couple of things jump right out from reading that aim. First of all, if you're not interested in knowing, finding and knowing your creator, then um, this class is probably not going to be that interesting to you. And then second of all, when it says as he really is and actually exists, um, for a lot of people, it, you know, people will ask you, do you believe in God? But there are not many people who say that they know God and they're not really common to think that you can know God. And yet the aim, uh, the, the first aim of the school is, is to help you find and know God or Yahweh, as we've come to learn, um, as he really is and as he actually exists. Now, um, let's go back to the Moses chart and just review a little bit of what we heard in, in the moderation. Um, because I sometimes go to different groups and people have all different ideas about God and what's going on in the creation. And uh, could, can you easily zoom in on the Yahweh is spirit part or is, is that not, um, I know different uh, programs. Okay, that's good. Uh, I don't wanna work you too hard. So as the moderator talks, we see in the upper left where it says that Yahweh is spirit. And spirit is not um, physical or not tangible. And we've come to learn that within Yahweh in his pure spirit state, he is the sum total of all the divine attributes of intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, beauty, love, justice, foundation, power, and strength. Now we have never known uh, or experienced physically uh, an all-pervading intelligence or all-pervading knowledge or all-pervading love or justice or any of these things. Our only experience with these attributes is having them manifest uh, through people. And so we have people that we might think of as kind or loving or just or intelligent or wise or knowledgeable. So one of the first things we try to come to an appreciation of in this class is that God or Yahweh is spirit. And spirit is something. Spirit is the source of everything in existence, the substance of everything in existence, the limits and bounds of everything in existence. And uh, it is of spirit that everything consists. Now, we would not be able to know anything about that if um, Yahweh hadn't made a way for us to know about it. And so uh, we find that when Moses and the children of Israel were delivered from Egypt, Yahweh called Moses atop Mount Sinai and he appeared to him uh, in a vision. And he showed him, um, he, he appeared himself in the shape and form of a heavenly man. And, uh, the word anthropomorphic simply means in the shape and form of a man. And he appeared as a great heavenly being, and he appeared in that form to Moses, as it's shown on this chart, and to 70 uh, elders, and to uh, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu. So 74 people out of all of Israel saw Yahweh Elohim in this incorporeal state. And it's by appearing in this shape and form that Moses learned of his existence and learned about him. 
Previously, he had appeared to Moses down where you see at the burning bush. And so, um, well, I, I, okay. So um, this is how Moses learned of Yahweh. And he saw him in this vision that we have portrayed here. Now, could we go all the way over to um, the book of Revelation and the first chapter? And uh, as the moderator stated, this teaching is not the work of some intelligent man who figured this all out. This is the result of a divine vision and revelation that the founder of this school, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, claimed to have received in the year 1931. But he was very particular about pointing out that you not just believe that he had a vision just because he said so. He proceeded to draw out the contents of his vision and to explain the meaning of his vision. And it's through understanding the contents and the meaning of the vision that we can come to a knowledge and a confidence that he actually did have a vision. Now, uh, I don't want to read the whole first chapter, but um, start at verse one and I'll bring it up and, and we'll probably skip down a bit. Okay, uh, Revelations, the first chapter. The revelation of Yahshua the Messiah, which Yahweh gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Okay, so just as I was talking about Moses having received a vision, and we can go back into Exodus and read about that, and we do that all the time uh, in Exodus, the 24th chapter, and then in Exodus 25th chapter, we read about the uh, pattern, the tabernacle. And so... Uh, you know, these classes, we have them all the time. There's classes all over the country. Now that they're being streamed on YouTube or posted on YouTube, uh, you can go back and watch these classes. So anyone that wants to know anything about their creator, um, it is, Yahweh is making it available to you and to us through the preaching of this gospel and through this teaching uh, that we received uh, by way of Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley. Now, um, the book of Revelation, not many people in the religious world know what to do with this book. And it was quite a surprise to me to learn that Revelation uh, is actually one of the simplest books in the Bible because what it really is, is the spiritual revelation of what the law and the prophets and what everything that was going on with Moses and the children of Israel, what was going on with Moses' vision, what all of that means. And um, I don't know of any other organization where you can go to learn that. So now here we have the revelation of Yahshua and you can see this picture of um, the aloistic form here combined with the garments of beauty and glory of the high priest. You know, now as, as, as soon as you start opening your mouth about this teaching, you, you, you just get pulled in to uh, the diversity of um, principles that exist. But if you look at this, you see Moses and John they're seeing the same individual. Now, um, and you know, this is why this has gone over in the moderation all the time and why we often try to explain this because the concepts that we have of God and he's got a man and God's a man, an old man with a beard and he's up in heaven somewhere. Um, all of these concepts that we've formed of our creator uh, are erroneous. And it really is um, not that hard to understand. But you see, you could say Moses is seeing Elohim here. He's seeing God. 
And then um, you would say, John over here, we could say he's seeing Elohim. So sees he's seeing God. But then, uh, and, and if you would uh, stay in Revelation, but if somebody would get me uh, John 118. And I'm just going to try to take this slow and, and work with whatever, you know, the things that are coming up uh, and then um, turn it over to somebody else. Uh, and we just hope that, uh, you know, we all, I mean, we're all familiar with these things if we've been coming to these classes for a while and we're all growing in our understanding. So hopefully Yahshua um, will keep us interested and he can always show us, uh, show us things. So go ahead and, and read that in, in John, please. John 118, no man has seen Yahweh at any time. The only begotten son who is in the bosom of the father, he has declared him. So, and, and again, I didn't have it read, but this picture that we have of Moses looking at Elohim, that's actually a depiction of what's written uh, and, and the 70 elders here. And this is in Exodus, the 24th chapter. And it reads there that they saw God or they saw Elohim. And that's also one of the reasons why we take the time to use the correct terminology and the correct name of our creator. Because in taking out those names and in taking out the distinction of Elohim as a title, mankind has made the Bible even more confusing uh, than it would be. Right. Because, because um, you have it in John 118, no man has seen God. And yet we have a picture here and we're saying it, it's coming out of Exodus that um, Moses saw God. And then we're reading over here in Revelation that John is seeing something. So this is why the moderator, uh, the moderation is careful to always instruct us that fundamentally Yahweh is spirit. He is intelligence. He is wisdom. He is love. He is justice. He is all of these attributes. And he, in his, what we call, or what Dr. Kenley taught us to call his pure spirit state, you, would, you wouldn't even know that he existed. So mankind, it's, it's not surprising that people wonder whether there is a God because uh, as it says in John 1 and 18, no man can see or perceive Yahweh in this pure spirit state. And because Yahweh is fundamentally spirit, he is without restriction and he is without limitation. And so it's only because he, he has a purpose whereby he intends to create creatures and reveal himself to those creatures. And it's because that was his purpose that we're able to have this class and to have an aim that purports to help you find and know something about a God that is invisible, incomprehensible, indiscernible, and inscrutable. Now, um, right. so read John 118 again. Just as, as it is in the King James or? Uh, no, you can read, you, you can put the correct name in there. That's fine. No man has seen Yahweh at any time. The only begotten son who is in the bosom of the father, he has declared him. So we, we look at every time we look at this Moses chart, you see, that's what we're looking at. So when the moderator is describing Yahweh Elohim as this Eloistic form who appears to Moses, that's the only, that's the only begotten son of Yahweh. That's Yahweh Elohim. And um, he, what is he doing? Uh, it, to, is he's declaring the Father or he's declaring Yahweh and his purpose 
to Moses. And as we see in uh, the Moses chart here, he proceeds and uh, you would, uh, if you're familiar with Genesis, the first chapter, in a period of six days, um, Moses is shown a vision of the heaven and earth coming into shape and form. Now, it's that self-same sun, that self-same uh, being that we refer to as Elohim, See, that's the son of Yahweh. And it's not that there's Yahweh and Elohim. This is simply, and it's so simple that we struggle with it almost our entire life. This is Yahweh in shape and form. And, you know, for example, he spoke to the children of Israel from when they were gathered around Mount Sinai. Now, there was not a mouth visible in the cloud, but they heard him speak. He spoke to them as a thundering voice, but they didn't see this vision. They didn't see the similitude. So he was able to speak to them without a visionary presence. And then he was able to appear to the 70 elders in a visionary shape and form. And then he was able to bring Moses up into an exalted state and show him a panoramic vision. And so without going into the whole story, when you read the, the book of Genesis, you're reading the account of the vision that Moses saw when he was in um, the mountain. Right. And now what we're reading in Revelation is this self-same being, the Son. See, the Yahshua is the revelation of Yahweh. This is the revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. This is Yahweh Elohim, whose name was revealed as Yahshua, appearing to John. So if we could go back over to John the first chapter and I want to find out uh, okay so read verse 1 again uh, 1 and 2 John 1 and 2 yes the same was in the beginning with Yahweh oh I, All... I, I'm sorry I meant uh, Revelations 1 uh, the the first and second verse. Back, okay. Revelations we one and two. Who bore record of the word of Yahweh and of the testimony of Yahshua the Messiah and of all things that he saw. Okay. Now, um, I just, you know, we repeat these things because we want you to hold these things in your mind as we're talking about them so that uh, me understanding or thinking I understand something is good for me, but our hope in these classes is that others can come to an ever-increasing understanding of Yahweh and his purpose. Right. Now, uh, I'll tell you what, you better reread uh, Revelation 1.1 1, 1 and 1.2, okay. and then I'll go on. Okay, Revelations 1 and 1 through 2. The revelation of Yahshua the Messiah, which Yahweh gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, second verse, who bore record of the word of Yahweh and of the testimony of Yahshua the Messiah and of all things that he saw. Now, you see, this is actually a, a mystery in and of itself that the book of Revelation is essentially a confirmation of what Moses wrote in the book of Genesis and what happened back here in the wilderness. And so John is writing down in the book of Revelation the things that he's seeing in a vision. Right. Now, um, skip down and uh, to verse, oh boy. Um, s 
First, pick up verse eight. I just want to touch on that. Okay. Revelations one and eight. Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him and all kindred of the earth shall wait because of him. Yes. Okay, so hold, hold on. Um, are you reading out of the holy name? Uh, yes. Do you want the King James Version? Well, it's, it's okay. I just need to find which verse it is in the holy name. Give me one okay. second. Um, I want the Alpha and the Omega right now. Oh, okay. Let's see. Um, they moved some of these verse verses eight. around. Verse 8? Okay, very good. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, I read that in the holy name. So let me get verse 8 in the... Um, I get the King James. King James Version. Okay. Revelations 1, 8, King James Version. I Thank am you. Alpha. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith Yahweh, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. So that's who was talking to Moses, and that's who was talking to John. And he's there in the beginning, and Moses is seeing the purpose unfold from the beginning down to the ending. And he's here with John, and John um, is looking back, and he's seeing the self-same vision, the self-same being, he's seeing Yahweh Elohim, the son, Yahshua, but he's seeing it uh, from the ending back to the beginning. So Alpha is the first letter of the uh, Greek alphabet, and it corresponds to Aleph, which is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, so that's the beginning. And then Omega is the last letter in the Greek al alphabet, and uh, that would correspond, the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet is uh, tau, I believe it's called. Uh, it's not really material. So right here in this verse, you see also seeing the concept of the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. And there's several places where the word or Yahshua re is referred to that way. Now, uh, keep going, please. Nine, verse 9 in the King James. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Yahshua the Messiah, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of Elohim and for the testimony of Yahshua the Messiah. And so we, we have written here on this chart that the, he's, uh, John was on an island. He's on the island of Patmos in the Aegean Sea. And he's looking back. Um, and I, I think we're going to, yeah, uh, keep going, please. 10. I was in the spirit on Yahweh's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Saying, now, um, <laughs> There's just so much to, uh, you know, and we're yeah. so, so blessed to have the keys to being able to unravel this. And, and uh, you know, I know that sometimes when people try, or certainly when I try to explain some of these things, I know sometimes people scratch their heads and it seems confusing. Um, but it's, it's, it really is simple. And um, these things are in your Bible. We're just reading out of the book of Revelation, but without an understanding, uh, it just doesn't, it doesn't have much meaning for, for many folks. And, and many uh, religious people decide that they don't even mess with the book of Revelation. Now, um, read, read verse 10 for me, please. There's something here. Uh, I think it's worth paying attention to. I was, hey, uh, and I'm sorry to be so rude, but how much time do I have? I need to pace myself. Uh, Marsha, okay, you have until um, 20 after. Um, five, 
10 after eight. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, you know, cause I just, it's like peeling an onion. There's all these layers and I don't want to get so much uh, on the table that I can't wrap it all back up. Uh, First 10, please. I was in the spirit on Yahweh's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Now, uh, I'm actually interested. What do you have in, I don't know. I'll, let me find what verse it is. In the Holy Name Bible, what do you have um, for that verse? I, I don't have the Holy Name. It's totally uh, here uh, okay. Oh, it's, it's verse 10. Okay. Uh, Revelations 1 and 10. I was in the spirit on the Sabbath day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, what thou seest, write in a book. Okay. And, and, and you see, that's what we have. This book of Revelation is what John saw and wrote in a book. But, uh, so in the King James, we have uh, on the Lord's Day, right. and, um, in uh, Holy Name Bible, it picks that up as the Sabbath day, right? So we would think, you know, that John is in the Aegean Sea on Sunday. But what he's actually saying here is, I was in the spirit on the Sabbath day. Right. Now, um, this is why we, uh, why there's just so much, so much confusion in the world. And uh, this is just, I wanted to bring some of this out in order to go back uh, through the scripture reading. So you see, um, was it in the scripture, the day of Yahweh cometh as a thief in the night? Yeah. Let's get that and uh, hold, hold revelation, please. Was it second or uh, first Thessalonians? First Thessalonians five. Um, First uh, Thessalonians 5 and 4. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. I'll tell you what. Um, two, go to. Yeah, first, back up. Uh, just start it at one. Read one and two, please. Of first okay. First Thessalonians 5 and 1. But of the times and in seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of Yahweh so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as now, from upon a woman with child. So it's pretty clear that when he says that the day of Yahweh so cometh as a thief in the night, that he's not talking about Sunday or a normal day. Right. Okay, so um, if we could go back to Revelation, and I'm sorry to be running you all around in the book. Okay. And read verse 10. I love the holy name, Greg, uh, or King James. Yeah, yeah, holy, holy, now that we know which is, you know what, we can, you can read the, the holy name. Okay, um, one and 10. I was in the spirit on the Sabbath day. And now, Herbie... Sorry. You see, John is, is um, see, he was in the spirit. And what we find out from our founder is, so we've got John pictured here. See the, the, the white um, cone that seems to be in front of him that he's looking into where it says panoramic vision of Elohim. Right. If you were, you could be sitting right next to John and you wouldn't have seen a thing. Right. And it's the same with Moses. You could be right next to Moses and not have seen a thing. 
And all the children of Israel down around the bottom of the mountain, they didn't see a thing. It was only the 70 elders. So these men have been given a vision of Yahweh because Yahweh Elohim is also a spirit being and he can appear in a vision, but he is not visible. And that's why the moderation talks about how he had to, uh, he came into the flesh as a man, Yahshua, the Messiah. Now, um, what I want you to realize is that we are talking about spirit and you can't see spirit with your natural eyes and you can't touch it. But what we are talking about is coming to an understanding of Yahweh. Right. And if you would get for me, uh, please, Habakkuk 2 and 2. And you see, when the moderator states that our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, had a vision, many of us thought that that was strange. But what you don't realize is that your Bible starts with, the vi with a vision to Moses, and it ends with the vision to John. And that Dr. Kinley's vision he had a vision of the self-same creator, Yahweh Elohim. And that's how it was revealed to him that Moses and John were both in the realm of the spirit or in the day of eternity or in the spiritual day of Yahweh or Yahweh's day or the spiritual Sabbath. Right. And that's how this whole teaching originated. And that's how we're able to show you how your Bible is put together and what it actually means. Now, um, let's go to Habakkuk and then I just have a few more minutes to wrap this up and we'll be done and hopefully somebody will get something out of it. So go ahead, please. Habakkuk two and two. And Yahweh answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. So, and again, there's, there's more to the context of this, but Habakkuk was beseeching Yahweh and Yahweh answered him and told him to write the vision and make it plain upon tables. Uh, keep going, I think. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But now, if, you see, he's talking to Habakkuk, and he's telling this to Habakkuk, and Habakkuk is, writing, Habakkuk is writing this down. But the vision is for an appointed time, Read. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. But at the end, which is the appointed time, the vision shall speak and shall not lie. So we never, uh, certainly I never realized this, that the, the, the Bible itself was pointing to this panoramic vision and revelation uh, that Yahweh had, uh, that, that, that Yahweh gave Dr. Kinley. Now, um, let me do this. I, I just want to get uh, touch Genesis a bit. Um, I, I think it's just the first chapter... Yeah, just start Genesis 1-1. One, one. Um, I'll interrupt you and we'll get through five. Okay, Genesis 1-1. One and one. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Now, the earth people don't know where this book comes from or what's being talked about. And I'm not, I just don't have the time to go off and read this out of Exodus, but you'll read that Moses goes up into the mountain and the cloud covered the mountain six days. And the seventh day, he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And 
what you're reading here in Genesis, the first chapter, is written by Moses, and it's an account of what he saw in his vision. So it's in the beginning of the vision when Moses goes up and Yahweh Elohim appears to him in the beginning of that experience, in the beginning of that panoramic, panoramic vision of Elohim to Moses. He right. sees Elohim, this visionary shape and form, this manifestation of Yahweh, create the heaven and the earth. Read. Second verse. And the earth became without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. So Moses and the earth it is immersed in darkness. Read. And Elohim saw the light. Oh, I'm sorry, third verse. And Elohim said, let there be light. And there was light. And Elohim saw the light, that it was good. And Elohim divided between the light and between the darkness. And Elohim called the light in day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, you know, we could read this a hundred times and, and not not have an appreciation for what's going on here. Now, so Moses is seeing Yahweh Elohim in a vision. And in the beginning of the vision, it's darkness. And then Elohim says, he hears Elohim say, let there be light. And you see, we have this light being shown here. And then some definitions are given to us. It says that Elohim called the light day and the darkness he called night. Nice. So you have a principle of light being day and darkness being night. And that's a spiritual, those are spiritual principles. Meanwhile, Moses is on top of Mount Sinai, laying on the ground, and uh, the, he's immersed in this cloud. And this cloud was a fire by day and a cloud by night. And so uh, he's there the evening when the cloud uh, turns uh, into a fire and in the morning when the fire turns back to a cloud. And see, it's marking the external time while Moses is here on the mount, but he is, Moses is in the spirit or he is in the light or he is in here the day of eternity. Right. And so there's no time operating within that realm. Now, um, and then so over in Revelation, you find out John was in, he says, I was in the spirit too. So John's in the same place in that day of eternity or in the realm of the spirit or in the light of Yahweh. And they're both seeing a vision of Yahweh Elohim and Yahweh Elohim is revealing to them um, his purpose. Now there was one last thing I wanted to pull out of Revelation, um, and then I'll start trying to stitch this all back up again, and hopefully somebody will get something out of it. Um, so uh, in Revelation, let's see, um, in, in the holy name, verse 12. I'll tell you what, go, go back uh, to 10 again, and then skip to 12. I'll, Revelation. I'll <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I got it, Greg. Revelations okay. 1 and 10. I was in the spirit on the Sabbath day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying. So see, he's not talking about the fact that it was Sunday. He's John was caught up into the realm of eternity in order to see this vision. Moses was caught up into the realm of eternity in order to see this vision. Our founder was caught up into the realm of eternity and, and he saw Moses and he saw John and he saw they, them receiving this vision. Right. Okay, read. 11 first, saying what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven assemblies which are in Asia, 
Now, there and were to, seven churches at that time, and I, we can skip those names and just jump down to 12. Thank you. <laughs> and I turned to see the voice that spake with me. Now, and, uh, so if these, you know, they, these, 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 there's so much on these charts. You see how we have John looking back? And if you look chronologically, time on this chart is moving from the left to the right because Moses is having his vision uh, 1,500 and some odd years prior to John having his vision. So John, see, he's looking back and he's confirming the things that Moses saw. Right. And our founder was caught up into eternity and he's confirming the things and understanding how John and Moses were both bearing witness to the self same thing to Yahweh Elohim. Right. Now, um, and that is the day of Yahweh, is, is being in the realm of the spirit, the light of the spirit, which he called day. Um, now, let me, uh, could we go to the, the ages and dispensations chart, please? And then uh, back to, uh, it, I'm going to start to work back through First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter a bit. And um, then we'll be done. I have, looks like I have 14 minutes. And now, uh, you see how, just like with the Moses chart, we have the fiery cloud like painting all the way around this chart. And then we have the beginning to the left and the ending to the right. So between the beginning and the ending, and if you tied that in with um, the Moses chart, you have Moses over here in the beginning and you have John over here in the ending, and they're both bearing witness to Yahweh Elohim and the operation of his purpose down through these ages and dispensation. Now, uh, <clears throat> We find out in Genesis that um, Yahweh creates the earth and creates the man and that you have Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and they're eating fruit, they're not ashamed. Uh, and they have one commandment, which is not to, I, I, I yeah, I, okay. <laughs> Yeah, there it is, plate 11 and 12. So you see, they're in a heavenly state. And they have the one commandment, and that is not to touch, of, not to eat, touch or eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And uh, so, you see, in a figure, they're in a heavenly state. This is physical, earthly people in the Garden of Eden but they have no toil, they have no sorrow, they're not working, there's no pain, there's no shame. Now, to make a long story short, and because of the mystery of iniquity, which is another lecture, I'm, I'm afraid, um, Eve is deceived by that mystery, by that glorious heavenly angel, and she disobeys the commandment. And so, um, she gives to Adam, and Adam willingly dies for his bride. And so Yahweh waits to the cool of the day, and they're cast out into the earth, where they're uh, have to toil, and in sorrow she'll be bearing children. And so figuratively, see, they are cast out of the light, they're into the darkness. And so this Garden of Eden figures to heaven or the day of Yahweh, and they're, as it were, cast out into the night. Now, we also come to understand that that night was not only external, but they were condemned in their conscience because of disobedience. Right. And so... 
that necessitates eventually the Messiah having to come in to atone for their disobedience. So from Adam down to the Messiah, you have a spiritual night because they are no longer in the presence of Yahweh. They are no longer in the light of eternity. And we've come now over into um, first the, uh, the antediluvian age, this, this first age here. Now, um, you find out that Eve had two children um, that Cain, the elder, killed Abel, that Eve was given a, a third child, Seth, to carry on uh, in Abel's line. And so you had, um, it's in Genesis, the third chapter. We, we, we won't get it, but it talks about the seed, the, the woman, a war between the woman and the serpent. And see, so that's the war between righteousness I uh, stay here because I, I just don't have the, the time. I, I, I appreciate. So that's evidenced by the fact by by the time Noah comes around, uh, uh, you know, 1600, 1500 years later, you read in Genesis that the iniquity imagination of man's heart was evil continually. Right. So see, there's a there's a, a spiritual night that starts with them being cast out, Adam being cast out of the garden. They're cast out into the darkness, cast out into condemnation. And that night runs all the way to um, the Messiah and the day of Pentecost. So um, you can go back to the elementary chart if you would. So, uh, just as we have the Adam plate where in Adam all men died, uh, then we have, if you'll slide down right underneath Adam, we have the Messiah. And in Yahshua the Messiah, all men are made alive. Right. So there's a nighttime that runs for 4,000 years from the transgression until the day of Pentecost. And then we often, with chronology, we read about how a day with Yahweh is as a thousand years and as a watch in the night. So you had four watches in the night or four millennium between the transgression and the, the resurrection. Now, if we could go over to um, just First Thessalonians uh, 1 and 5 again, uh, uh, 5 and 1, sorry. First Thessalonians 5, 1. But of the times and of the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of Yahweh so cometh as a thief in the night. Now, you see, mankind is condemned in his heart and mind from the fall of Adam. And it's only those who receive the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, first with the Jews and then uh, the, the Gentiles, Pentecost, seven years later, and now here down in our times through the preaching of the gospel, that makes you to be a child of the day when you receive the Holy Spirit, when Yahweh reveals his purpose to you. And that, as it were, that is that light that um, when he appeared to Moses, when he appeared to John, when he appeared to our founder, you see, that is the day of Yahweh. So, um, oh, the day star arise in our hearts. If somebody else could dig that one up for me. Second um, Peter 1. Uh, okay. I don't want to go there yet, but um, keep going. Uh, uh, verse 2 here. Verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly, perfectly that the day of Yahweh so cometh as a thief in the night. So the night time, you see, we're still in the night if we have not been resurrected by the Holy Spirit. Yahshua came in and atoned for the endemic transgression. He was buried. He rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. He tarried for 40 days, all in fulfillment of the scriptures. You had the Passover lamb was 
that died in Egypt. You had Israel who was buried in their houses. They resurrected through the Red Sea on the third day into the wilderness. They spent 40 years in the wilderness. Yahshua spent 40 days in his um, resurrection. And then Yahshua ascended on up, thank you, into heaven. I see it. Thank you. I see the sign. Thank you. Um, so then you have, see, on the day of Pentecost, you have the Peter, the, 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 the 11 disciples and the 120 in the upper room. They received the Holy Spirit. And that is the day of Yahweh coming while the world yet and still dwells in darkness. Now, read on, please, verse 3. A lot of noise. Excuse me, somebody has their noise in the background. Can you silence your, mute your mic, please? Women. Okay, Thank sorry. You. Would you read First Thessalonians 5 and 3, please? 3 now? Yes. Okay, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, is travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Read. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Now, <clears throat> see, this is a day and a night that's known only unto Yahweh. It's a spiritual day and a spiritual night. And um, we become the children of the day when we receive the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is the preaching of the gospel. And just as Yahshua came in and atoned for the Adamic transgression, see, he atoned for the sin of mankind. So when we come to a knowledge and an understanding of this great gospel, when he reveals himself to us, that delivers us from our sins. See, that frees us from condemnation. And that takes us out of the darkness and into the light. So we're walking around. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. We're walking around in the world. And the world, see, lieth in darkness. But we are not in the darkness because he has given us an understanding of his purpose. Now, I just want that one last scripture. Uh, was it Peter you said? Yeah, 2 Peter uh, 1 and 19 through 21. 2 Peter 1 and 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, wherein you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart, knowing oh. this. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's okay. So you say the there's just so many things when we were out in the yeah. world and we somebody would talk about prophecy we thought you know that meant foretelling the future right and um dr kinley did foretell many world events and and he did it accurately and unfailingly but prophecy actually means the spiritual understanding or spiritual interpretation of the scriptures right and th that's what we're doing in these classes is it's the Holy Spirit. See, in John 14, 26, as the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, he shall teach you all things. So through the preaching of the gospel, Yahshua is delivering us from this darkness. And see, we have a sure word of prophecy, which is the gospel. And if we take heed, See how it says that it's unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Now that dark place was our heart and our mind. And that light frees us from ignorance and it frees us from superstition and it frees us from fear and it frees us from condemnation and it frees us from shame. 
And so that is the day of Yahweh, the light of Yahweh, the peace of Yahweh, the love of Yahweh arising in our hearts or coming in and taking up residence in our heart and mind. And that makes us to be, as Paul has said there in, in Thessalonians, that we are now with the Holy Spirit in us, the children of the day. Now, um, I'm out of time, and I hope you got something out of that. I really had no idea where I would go, and I know I left a couple things unraveled, but hopefully that made some sense. And we just ask that you be patient, and you come back, and you study, and you learn with us. Yes. Um, because there truthfully is a God, and he truthfully has made it possible for us to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he is real. And that knowledge, that is his spirit in us, and that makes us to be the children of the day. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Greg Preston. For our second speaker, it is an honor and a pleasure to call on Dr. Rosemary Turner from our Springfield, Ohio class. Dr. Turner. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I'm thankful to be here. Uh, thank you for inviting me because it's always good to be with the brethren to, to hear the gospel and to share what Yahweh has given to each individual. Right. And I got a lot out of what Dr. Prestis had to offer. And it was so beautiful because my mind was running along the same lines. As soon as I felt like just saying <laughs> ditto, and that's the end of my lecture. <laughs> But I'm thankful to be here. And, yeah. you know, this truly is a wonderful blessing that we have to be here under the sound of the gospel. I remember, well, I, well I'll give a little brief testimony. I was in this class as a little child. I remember coming in and out of class. I met my parents coming to class and my dad went first. And then my sister Roberta and I would go down to the building and look. And we saw these charts and we thought they were cartoons and we just <laughs> run off home and laugh. But, you know, I came, you know, Yahweh is so merciful that, you know, he didn't strike us down for laughing because we, he know, we were carnal minded and ignorant. We didn't know what we were doing. But, and I remember them bringing me to class as a little child. And I remember seeing Dr. Kinley on the floor and I was making noise. You know how kids do. I was standing up in front of the chairs making noise and all at once I had this feeling to turn around and look and I looked at Dr. Kinley and he looked at me and I got up in my chair and folded my hands and I was quiet for the rest of the night because <laughs> you know that power was in yeah. him we don't yeah. worship that man but we recognize now what that was in him it was Yahshua in the founder setting up this teaching for us. He received a divine vision and revelation. That's what, that's what the result of all this that we see, these charts. This is a result of a divine vision and revelation given to him in the year of 1931, straight from Yahweh. And when you first come into class, and I don't know if there's any newer people here that may tune in on YouTube and they haven't been exposed to this teaching, this was all once new to all of us. Right. We all had a first time coming to class and seeing these charts. And it doesn't look at first like there's any rhyme or reason to what you're seeing, but it's laid out according to the pattern. Now, the previous speaker talked about how at the top of this chart, we call it the Moses chart. And the, really the title is Elohim, the archetype. Archetype means original pattern of the universe. And what we have to understand, what the first teacher was going into is how we must know Yahweh. Our first aim uh, is to help you find and know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. None of us knew how Yahweh really existed. We didn't know him. We are all deceived from the beginning. None of us knew our heavenly father. But what we've, what we've learned down here at this teaching is as it's depicted on this chart, you see, like he pointed out, the orange cloud on the ages and dispensation chart. This chart also shows 
that fiery cloud and everything on the chart abides within this cloud. And that is to show us that everything abides within Yahweh. Yahweh is our heavenly father and he is pure spirit. We can't see him. We can't hear him with our, these ears. We can't smell him. We can't taste him. We can't touch him. And Yahweh knows that we can't do that. He made us limited in our senses. So we have to be elevated in the spirit to understand he's teaching us who he Thank is. You. And when you see Elohim, that is Yahweh in shape and form, seen only in divine visions and revelation. That's who he is. That's how he appeared to the prophets. That's how he appeared to Moses. That's how he appeared to Dr. Kinley at the end of this age. That's how he appears to man in shape and form. And when he manifested in the flesh as Yahshua the Messiah, that was Yahweh himself in that special prepared body. Right. We didn't know that before, that about Yahweh being, to, oh, thank you, that Yahweh is y Yahweh Elohim and he is Yahshua. Now, Elohim is a title. It's not a name. It's the title that Yahweh chose for himself in that shape and form. And see, Yahweh, Yahshua said, get, get John 5 and 39, and then just read on down through 43. John 5 and 39. And we all, and Dr. King needs to tell us, now who's talking here? And right. who, it's Yahshua himself that's speaking. Before, I never even never even really thought much about the Bible or what was in it or who was talking, who they were talking to or what they were saying. But this is our savior, Yahshua speaking. Go ahead and read, right. please. John 5 and 39 through 42. Ye mm -hmm. search the scriptures, yes. for in them you think you have eternal life. Mm -hmm. And they are they which testify of me. See, these scribes and Pharisees, they did read the scriptures. They studied the scriptures. He wasn't telling them to do that. They were already doing that. Right. But they had a carnal mind and they didn't understand what they were reading. Mm -hmm. He said, you search the scriptures for in them, you think you have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. You know, they must fight in words to them. They thought <laughs> right. he was boasting. What do you mean they testify of you? We'll continue to read. But you will not come to me that you might have life. Right. I receive well, not honor from men, mm -hmm. but I know you, that you have not the love of Elohim in you. Now, how did you know that? Because Yahshua is the love of Yahweh. Right. And he knew that he wasn't in them. He was still in that, in that sacrificial body. He hadn't poured out his spirit. He said, you don't have the love of Yahweh in you. Continue, please. I am come in my father's name. Right. And you receive me not. And see on this chart, you see Yahweh and Yahshua. Yah is the masculine portion of the name. That's the father, see? And, and Yahshua, that means Yahweh, is salvation. So he said, I come in my father's name and you receive me not. Read on. Let another come in his own name. Yes. Him you will receive. And man will follow anybody who gets right, on the Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right. Any other name, they'll follow. My, and I did, we all did follow blindly. And like I said, I was brought up more or less in this class. And there was times when I got away from class and started listening to other things. And, and it uh, Yahweh mercifully brought me back so yeah. that I could grow in this gospel. And I'm so thankful. Now, Yahweh, we have to understand to know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. And we find coming down here that Yahweh, our heavenly father, he takes on, he takes on a shape and form, seen only in divine visions and revelations. And I'll get 2 Peter 119 again and read on down through there. Because he did, he did appear to the prophets. He did talk to them. Right. And and I'll go ahead and read that. And I'm talking too much. <laughs> Peter 119. Yes. We have also a more sure word of prophecy unto yes. you do well that you take heed. Mm -hmm. as light that, I'm sorry. As a light that shineth in a dark place. That's right. Read that, on. 
until the day dawn and the day sty arise in your hearts. Mm -hmm. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Okay, that's very important to know. No prophecy of the scripture. And we got, we got to know what the scriptures are. Uh, what's written from Genesis through, through um, Joshua, through Malachi, rather. That's the prophecy. See, that's the law and the prophets. Uh, the first five books of the Bible are the law. That was attributed to Moses, to the first five books. And then from there on through Joshua is the, is the prophecy. And he's saying here that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Read on. For the prophecy came not at any time by the will of man. Mm -hmm. The man of Yahweh spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit moved these men to write what's in the scriptures. And it's the mystery of Yahweh is hidden in these scriptures. And it takes a revelation straight from Yahweh so that we can understand the mystery that's written in these scriptures. Uh, let's see, get John uh, 1, John 17 and read 1 through 3. Okay, John 1 and well, John, 7. I'm, John 17 and 1, please. Okay, John 17 and 1. Right. The, these words spake Yahshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, mm -hmm. the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. Okay, read on. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, mm -hmm. that he should give eternal life to as many as thou has given him. Now he's going to give us the definition of what eternal life is. Read on. Yes. And this is life eternal, that thou may know that thou only are the true El yes. and Yahshua Messiah, whom thou hast sent. Okay, read that verse again and go back to the Moses chart so we can see it on the chart. He says, uh, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, Yahweh, Read on. Right. And might know that thou only are the true Elohim. Right. And Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. Now, see, that's showing that Yahweh is not a trinity as right. it's taught in the world. He's a unity. Mm -hmm. That's how we know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. We didn't know that before. We thought that there was a, like a committee. There was God, and he was like an old man in a chair with a white beard. And then, <laughs> and and we, I didn't know what the Holy Ghost was. Right. I was a, and then we think about Jesus Christ. We think about that's a that's a representation for God. But no, that was really the Creator in that sacrificial body. Mm -hmm. We didn't know any of that before coming down here to class. These three are one. Now get on the elementary chart on that unity of the spirit plate. Mm -hmm. Yes. And see, uh, over there where it says, see John, 1 John 5 and 7. And we're so blessed to know these things. Go ahead and read that, 1 John 5 and 7, out of the King James Version of the Bible, because it's not in there in the Holy Name Bible. It was taken out. A verse was taken out because they didn't think that it pertained, it was true that it was originally in the scriptures. Well, go ahead and read that out of the King James. John 5 and 7. Uh -huh. well, there are three that bear record in heaven, the mm -hmm. Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. These three are one. This is, this is the mystery. These three are one. Read on. And there are three that bear witness in earth. Now, it's Yahweh's given us witnesses. He's given us witness right here in the earth plane. Read on. The Spirit. Mm -hmm. and the water and the mm -hmm. blood and these three agree in one and it's right there on the chart the spirit the water and the blood and these three agree in one see read on if we receive the witness of man the witness of Yahweh is greater right but this is the witness of Yahweh which he has testified of his son that's right he's he testified of his son and all through the scriptures I was reading a transcript of one of Dr. Kinley's lectures. I can't recall which one it is, but he said the scriptures are the revelation of Yahweh. When he spoke to these prophets, he was laying down these principles 
that's displayed on this chart. There's principles of blood all the way across. Blood, 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 blood. Water, 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 all the way across. Spirit, 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 all the way across. Why is he doing that? Because that's showing the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. And it's according to the scriptures. Right. See it in the chart with Adam. You know, I don't know all of the correlations, but Yahweh's shown me enough. You know, if you make two, two dots, you can draw a straight line. If you got, if you've got something to line it up with and he's lining it up for us, you got Adam, you know, he was condemned in his heart and his mind. He died in his conscience. That's a showing of death or of blood. See, and it said that it recorded in the scriptures in Genesis that he's, he was by the sweat of his brow that he would have to scratch out some food. And, you know, he was sweating. He couldn't go to Lowe's or Home Depot and get no tools. He was, had to make his own tools to till the ground. See, that's blood and water and spirit. You know, when they left the garden, when they were driven out, that angel, Michael, he was keeping the way to the tree of life. So you got principles of blood, water, and spirit right there in this first plate on the transaction. See, you got the same thing in the Noah plate. Where he preached to the, he preached. He was a preacher of righteousness. I think that's in Peter also. But he preached to the people, warning them that the world was going to be destroyed by water. See, they didn't know that. Noah had water on his brain. He had that in, Yahweh showed him that. And he preached to the people. So he got the blood off of his head. Is that what is that? Isaiah is it 33 or Ezekiel 33 it talks about the watchman. I can't remember where that is. Ezekiel the 33rd. Yes, if you read that, just so we know it's in there. There's a principle of blood, that preaching, and the blood being on the people's head. Just read that real quick. Okay, Ezekiel, uh, let's see, uh, 33. Uh, I think it's toward the beginning. Okay, I was going to say eight. Uh, Ezekiel 33, and uh, I'll start at one. Okay. Uh, again, the word of Yahweh, Ezekiel 33 and one. Again, the word yeah. of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son mm -hmm. of man. Speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, when I bring the sword upon the land mm -hmm. of the people of the land, take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman. Yeah. And when he seeth the sword come into the land, he bloweth the trumpet and warn the people. Mm -hmm. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning of the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. Right. He heard, heard, okay, fifth verse. He heard the sound of the trumpet and mm -hmm. took no warning. Right. His blood shall be upon him. Mm -hmm. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. Right. Go Sixth ahead. verse. Yeah. But if the watchman see the sword come right. and blow not the trumpet mm -hmm. and the people be not warned, mm -hmm. if the sword come and take any person from among them, he taketh away. And he is taken mm -hmm. away in his iniquity, mm -hmm. but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So see, Noah warned the people about right. what was to come. So that blood was on their own heads when they didn't take heed. And mm -hmm. Noah knew the water was coming. So that's blood and water. And then they entered in, he and his family entered into the ark and Yahweh shut the door. So that's the spirit. It's got a principle of blood, water, and spirit. Again, not made up by, but by this class, not made up by any man. It's recorded in everybody's Bible. These That's principles are laid down in the scriptures of blood, water, and spirit, but it's hidden in a mystery. See, I, okay, uh, go ahead and read. And see, you can see down in the migratory pattern too. You see how they had to take out a lamb. They had to slay that lamb and they took the blood of that lamb and they struck it on the door at the top and on the two side posts of the door. And, uh, and they had a basin that they had the blood in to dip out of to strike the door. That's right. showing blood, see? And then they went to the divided waters of the Red Sea. That's water. And then they have to be led by the angel in the cloud. That's spirit, blood, water, spirit. These principles 
are laid down and recorded in the scriptures by the Holy Spirit talking to these men that wrote the scriptures. And when you look at that door, Yahshua said, I am the door. Yes. And you look at that door with that blood on the top and on the two side posts of the door and the basin. That doesn't that make a configuration of the cross? Yes. That's he had that crown of thorns on his head. He was nailed in his right hand and his left hand and nailed in his feet. We didn't make that up. Yahshua, this is him laying down his his purpose and plan for us to understand him. But it's hidden in a mystery. Now, I think that's a First Corinthians, the second chapter, I believe. Yeah. It says we speak the you know, if you got that, go ahead and get that. Because that's what this teaching is all about. This is the Yahweh's revealing, just like the, the first speaker was so great at letting us know this is Yahweh bringing us out of darkness. We're children of the light now. Now we can see these things you can always see. You know, do you remember looking at the Bible and thinking, this is too big? I ain't reading this. I mean, <laughs> that's right. Because it's just like uh, stuff I didn't understand. You can't understand it with a carnal mind. But Yahweh has laid, laid it down for us. He's broken it down for us so we can understand him. He is the Father. He is the Word. He is the Holy Spirit. And Yahshua truly is the Savior. We know that now because we can see these, these principles laid down in the scriptures. That's okay. right. Go ahead and read that. I think that's in the second chapter. It's 1 Corinthians 2 and uh, 6. So Thank you. Go ahead and read, please. First Corinthians 2 and 6 and 7. Yes, please. However, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet mm -hmm. not wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Right. We speak the wisdom of Yahweh in a mystery. Yes. Even no. the hidden wisdom, which Yahweh ordained before the world unto our glory. Read. which none of the princes of this world knew for had they known it they would not have crucified the savior of glory and i remember dr kinley saying if if they really knew who that was he'd still be looking for somebody to get him on the cross yeah he'd still be look because he he didn't he knew that men didn't know who he was he knew they didn't understand because he was still walking around in that sac sacrificial body, he was to be the lamb that was going to, he's, he's that real lamb. We talk about the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And this is him manifested. He shed his blood. And now we really know that it was our savior who shed his blood. We know because we've got a pattern to go by. And everything in the universe, see, for, is a reflection, and one or another reflection of Yahweh. Hit Romans 1, 19 and 20, please. Okay. And then get um, the, gr the green chart. Do you have the green chart? Yes, we got it. Okay. Okay, Romans 1 and 19. Yes. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. And again, knowing of Yahweh. Paul's talking about knowing Yahweh. That's an important thing. That's mm -hmm. eternal life to know our creator as he really is and actually exists that's the only way we can have eternal life it doesn't mean you have to know everything that's right. every correlation and everything he's showing us himself you, oh boy go ahead and read i'm sorry for interrupting no 19 first uh -huh. for yahweh has showed it unto them for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world mm -hmm. are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and supernal nature. Now that's a biggie. Even yes, <laughs> even <laughs> his eternal power. And and when it says supernal nature, that's what we used to say. Godhead. Godhead. Yeah. Or his makeup. We, yeah. Even his supernal. Oh, go ahead and read it. I'm tongue tied. Okay. Even his <laughs> eternal power. Okay, I'll read the twentieth verse again. Thank, I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, for the invisible things of him yes. from the creation of the world are clearly seen, <laughs> being understood by the things that are made, right. even his eternal power and supernal nature. 
Yes. So that they are without excuse. So that they are without excuse. Now right. we can see when we look at nature, when we look at the natural things, it makes sense because right. it's portraying our creator and it's showing that these three are one. When you look at this chart, the creator, and that's Yahweh, imaged, and it has Elohim above the word imaged, by his creation, Yahshua, because he was manifest in the flesh, see? He's manifested in and out of the physical body. But it's showing the creator image by his creation. And when we look at this, we see the word spirit. Spirit is substance, the source and law, eternity. He's the source and substance of everything in the universe, as the moderator said. And right. when we see this word fellow progenitiveness, I didn't know what the heck that was. But that means when you look at fellow, that part means love. Yeah. That this is the instinctive love of the father for his for his uh, children. Right. Yeah, we are his offspring. As where is that Acts seventeen, chapter seventeen twenty eight? Go ahead mm -hmm. and read that real quick. All this pertains to what we're learning down here. Yeah. All of this pertains to that. That's right. Acts seventeen twenty eight. Yes. Yeah. Uh, for in him we live and mm -hmm. move and have our being. Right. Also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. We're Yahweh's offspring. See? That's right. And he cares for us. When you look at Romans 1, 19 and 20, did I let you finish that? Yeah, and the natural things are a reflection of the spiritual things or the true things. And I don't have any children, but I have nieces and nephews that I'll fight you for. I mean, you know, you have right. but pe people that have children. I can't imagine how big your love is. If somebody mm. would harm them, you'd just be like a, a mother hen over them, over them chicken eggs. See, right. <laughs> you'd, be cl you'd be fighting for your kids. And not only that, you want your kids to grow up and get a good education. You want them to have some sense. You, you don't want nothing to happen to them. And you're going to feel like that till they get to be old people. Right. <laughs> you love your kids. And see, that's a reflection of Yahweh, the philoprogenitiveness of Yahweh. He cares for us. He loves us. And, you know, Satan will try to tell you, oh, Yahweh don't really love me. I'm no good. Well, you know, we're his offspring. That's right. A lot of people, they know their kids' flaws, but they don't give up on them mm -hmm. because of that great love. And he shows his love to us through the creation, if you look and see, uh, go ahead, can you zoom in a little bit on this middle section where it's got Yahweh Elohim and it's showing his nine divine attributes. Yes, it's cho showing intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, beauty, love and justice, foundation, power and strength. These are the nine main attributes of Yahweh. And I used to say, well, how do they know that? But the whole reflect, the whole creation reflects those nine. When you look at the tabernacle pattern, maybe you could blow it up a little bit more. You see that these vessels in this tabernacle, first of all, the tabernacle itself is threefold. You've got a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. Three compartments, but one tabernacle. See? Right. And so you've got the most holy place, you've got the Ark of the Covenant, and you've got the two archangels, replicas of Michael and Gabriel. See, this is a three-in-one configuration, and that's showing the unity of the spirit in the most holy place. And then in the holy place, you've got the altar of incense, the golden lampstand, and the table of showbread with 12 cakes of bread on it. And that's threefold. That's showing the three attributes there. And then you've got in the current roundabout, you've got the brazen laver and you've, the, with, with water that the priest washed the sacrifice in. And also the priest would wash. Right. They, they had to be cleansed and, and anointed before they officiated in the tabernacle. You got the altar of sacrifice here where sin offerings were offered up. And the priest had to be anointed with holy anointing oil at the door before they could officiate in the tabernacle. These are nine basic vessels in this, in this uh, tabernacle. Why nine? Right. Because it's a reflection of the creator with his nine divine attributes. 
empathy. And, you know, there's so much, that's, this is wonderful. And then I'll zoom on over here to man. See over the, the section here where it says man, and he's got nine systems and I can't read it because my eyes are, <laughs> would you, can you zoom that up just a little bit more? I know we got the nervous system and then endocrine and reproductive system. And then in the holy place, you've got the respiratory system. What is that? I can't read it. Well, I know we got the excretory system. Sorry, uh, we can't we can't zoom it in. Oh, you can't zoom it in. But man's got nine systems, the foundation, right. and it matches up with the with the attributes that's on a Yahweh Elohim because Yahweh created us. So these systems that we have, you know, let's see, respiratory, excretory, and I think that says circulatory, circulatory, circulatory excretory. Then the digestive, muscular, and skeletal. And that's in the court roundabout. And that's yeah. showing the nine systems of man correlating with the nine attributes of Yahweh. When you look at the planets and the universe, we got nine planets in our solar system. Right. And the sun is showing Yahshua the Messiah, and he's controlling all these planets. They're not crashing into each other. This is Yahweh's control of this and showing the, the nine planets in our solar system. Mm -hmm. He's put it there. I know scientists are debating about, well, is Pluto really a planet? And maybe we've got <laughs> a new planet. See, man, this is man. They're just using their carnal minds to try and throw a monkey wrench in the works. But Yahweh knows what he created. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, and that's he set it up. That nine, that nine is a number showing that the supernal nature of Yahweh. And then the system of system, you know, I know Dr. Kinley said 10 means complete. And when you look at your body, you've got nine systems, but the system of systems, that's the whole body system. The whole system of your body is the 10th. It's the called integumentary system. See, and that is displayed here on the chart. And you've got, look how we're made. We didn't mm. do this. Nobody right. in this class thought this up and said, I'm going to fool everybody with this. This is how we're made. That's right. Babies are still born every day the same way with a head cavity, a chest cavity, and an abdominal cavity. And you're laid up here right with the tabernacle. The most holy plate has the mercy seat and the two archangels and the cloud, which is always presence in the cloud. That's that eye, that all-seeing eye of Yahweh. And here we are, men, you've got a most holy place. You've got a head cavity and it's not, it's filled up with your brain. <laughs> so that brain is symbolic of that cloud that dwelt between the wings of the cherubim on the mercy seat. That's showing, and you look, Michael and Gabriel, Michael was a warrior angel and Gabriel was a messenger. So yeah. when you look in your brain, you've got sensor, sensory and motor those two functions of your brain. When you touch a hot stove, you lay your hand on it, there's, there's a, that message gets by quick too. You're always quick. That's you right. Say, oh, I think I'm, my hand's burning. No, it's instantaneous. You get the message that it's hot, you know, pulled your hand away because that's the, the motor sensory. It's all working together, showing mm -hmm. how quick Michael and Gabriel, that's that message. That's the message and the motor working in your body instantaneously, showing that power of Yahweh and his archangels. I tell you, it's wonderful. And you've got, if we've got in the base of our brains, we've got a gland called the pituitary gland. And it's got seven hormones out of one lobe and three, is it no? Yeah, three out of the yeah. other lobe. And that's right. showing those 10 laws that were written on those two tables of stone. And that was the master law of Israel. That's, that's 10 commandments. And our gland, our pituitary gland is called the master gland of the body. That's right. I mean, if we don't make this up. We can't make this up. We can't make ourselves be any other way. And you got two eyes, but they see as one. You better hope they see as one. That's You're not right. seeing two different things out of each eye. And that's showing the all seeing <laughs> eye of Yahweh. The, they're showing the law and the prophets. See, you, and they see it as one. Their that, that same message is coming across through the scriptures, through the law and the prophecy, blood, mm. water, spirit. He, it's Yahweh's message, and he's showing us through our eyesight. And what do we call that? Vision. So, and that, and when, that, when that Shekinah would flash, 
this it said that he saw that image in the cloud. That's where Yahweh said he would dwell. So he dwells in us. We, we're not alone. You know, never alone. He's never, you can't hide from Yahweh. And you can't hide from yourself. That's a type of that. You know, I could say, well, I think I'm a size five. And that's just a big lie. I can't lie to myself. I know, I know what I am. <laughs> and then you look down here in the holy place. You got these three vessels down here, the altar of incense showing the prayers that, that are sent up to Yahweh. The inter Yahshua was the intercessor. And, and that's when we look over at our body and we see we've got our lungs and we've got the, we don't, man don't know how to combine all these elements to make air. You know, we, we know what we need, some of these elements, but Yahweh, it's, this was after the art of the apothecary. And that means Yahweh has got us breathing. He's got us where we can live sweet a sweet savor unto Yahweh it's refreshing to take a big deep breath of air see yes. refreshing and it, and it's feeding it's feeding your body your cells because when that that's showing the love of Yahweh when when that blood is pumped see that blood is pumped through the aorta you got blood going to the lungs to be refreshed with oxygen and then that that same blood that blood that's oxygenated is being pumped back out to the whole body. That's showing the love of Yahweh through our respiratory system and our circulatory system working together. See, that's beauty, love, and justice. Beauty of Yahweh and the love of Yahweh to circulate his gospel to us. See, it, it's so beautiful that, that we're, we're breathing and we're breathing. <gasps> we're breathing yes. that name. Yahweh. We, don't, we can't breathe no other name without choking. That's his name, Yahweh. And, okay. and you know, we should be thankful. I mean, I'm, I'm not telling people what they ought to do. I should be thankful that I can breathe, that I know I'm breathing the name of Yahweh. That last Psalm, what's it? The very last Psalm, what does it say? Psalms Psalm. 150 and six. Thank you. Let everything that hath breath praise Yahweh. Yes. Hallelujah. Everything that has breath, <laughs> praise Yahweh. Praise. And you're going to praise him. You can stand up here. People can argue with you. Well, I think the name is Jesus. And they're steady going. <gasps> right. And they don't even know it. They're praising. They're, they're going to praise that name, whether they want to or not. And I didn't know before when you say hallelujah, that that means praise be to Yahweh. Right. You see it in, in churches. Uh, that they say hallelujah praise the lord because they don't know no better they don't know and i didn't know i remember when i first started coming to class dr kinley was still uh using the 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 name the lord god and jesus christ when he talked to us because we didn't know any better and then he introduced the name to us see but you know dr kinley wasn't teaching lord god and jesus he was teaching the pattern and That's teaching right. the operation of Yahweh. And he, then he introduced the true name to us so that we can be. And I remember saying, oh, man, I don't want to be different from everybody else because I didn't understand. I didn't understand. But now, you know, that's a beautiful name. Yahweh is our heavenly father's name. That's the family name. And Yahshua is Yahweh is salvation. That's what we're learning down here at these classes. So thankful to be here. And then now look, see, we did the most holy place and the holy place. And there's so much, just like the first speaker said, there's so much to be learned down here. We got to keep coming back and encouraging one another. You got these, these three main vessels in the court roundabout, the, the altar of, of sin sacrifice, the brazen labor, see, and then the holy anointing oil that the priest had to be anointed with. And you look in your body, when we eat in this principle of eating so that we can live, something had to die That's so, right. so that we can live. It doesn't matter if you're a vegetarian or, or you eat, you know, if you're eating meat or what you're eating. See, it's, it has to be plucked from its life source if it's a plant. If you say, I don't eat nothing but, but lettuce. Well, you had to pluck that lettuce from its life source. So it had to die for you to ingest it. Same thing with the chicken. You're not eating no live chickens. You're, you, it has to be killed. There's a death. That's showing the sacrifice. 
That's showing Yahshua laying down his life for us. And that sacrifice, all these sacrifices portrayed Yahshua the Messiah because it's showing that something had to die for us to live. And that was the savior. And when you look at this, the grading system on this altar, see, and that they've got this, it's a fire that never went out. And when you look in your intestine, you've got the ascending, transverse, descending, and sigmoid colon. That's the large intestine. Then the small intestine, you know, it's all in there. So uh, I forget how many feet it is. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> but that's showing that grading system. And that's where your food is burned. Uh, did you know your food was burned? And right. you know it. Sometimes if you have, have a burning sensation and you eat too much, <laughs> that, <laughs> but your body is taking that food and burning it up. You don't have no lamb chops or, or hamburgers running through your vessels. The, the nutrients are taken out of that food. And that's what's in assimilated up in the body. Right. The rest is cast off into the draught. It's, it's the waste. See, we operate according to this tabernacle pattern. You've yes. got the labor, see? That's where the, where the sacrifice was washed and it got bloody. It got bloody, see? And you know, that lines up right with the Red Sea. That's Red Sea, that's showing the blood or death. That's where Spiro and his host were drowned in the Red Sea. And when you look in your kidneys, your kidneys function is to wash the blood. So there's that principle of blood there. you got blood and then you got uh, the priest being anointed with that holy anointed oil before he could be, before he could, what am I, to be anointed means to be quickened. And when you have your adrenal glands right over top of your kidneys, and that's the gland that secretes the hormone that will give you that fight or flight or give you, I tell you, somebody uh, took me to teach me how to swim. And I didn't, I was so scared that somehow I got out of that swimming pool. I didn't know how to swim before I went in or when I came out, but somehow I was so frightened that I managed to get out of that swim, the middle of that swimming pool. Some people, they see a large dog and they, they're not on a leash, you'll run, you'll jump and run and get, you'll be like an Olympic star and you don't even know how you got the power. But Yahweh equipped that in your body, that, that quickening. And that's showing that being quickened by the Holy Spirit. See, blood, water, and spirit. It's all laid down in, in the tabernacle. It's laid down in our physical bodies, see, as a witness. See, you look at the cell. You got, you got protons. No, that's an atom. The proton, neutron, and electron, see, in, in the atoms. All, all matter is composed of atoms. And there's, pro, there's a certain number of protons, certain number of neutrons and electrons, depending on what the element is. So everything material is composed of atoms. Threefold, again, threefold, but one atom. There's other parts to the atom too. Like this is a main, just like in your body, there's three main compartments, but there's, there's other parts to you, but the, the three main parts is showing that supernal nature of Yahweh, just like with the atom, the proton, neutron, electron. In the cells, you got the cell body, the cell body, the nucleus, and the nucleolus. Threefold, yet one cell. See, and that's in plants and animals. The, Yahweh, I tell you, we didn't make this up. Yahweh's just letting us in on it. And he's showing us these different facets of nature because that goes right with Romans 1, 19 and 20. And it shows right here on the Moses chart when you go back to that, as the first speaker was talking about how he brought Moses up into the mountain. And I hope I'm not going too fast or sounding too, just join it. I tell you, it's just wonderful to be here. Beautiful. Yeah, it's just beautiful. wonderful to be here. Get Exodus 24, 9 and 10. And Yahweh has laid it all out for us. I love pictures anyway. And he showed us a div the divine pattern of the universe. He showed us his purpose, pattern, and plan. And when we look at this, just like we read Genesis, you know, I used to read Genesis. I didn't know. I thought it was like six days that took God to create the heavens and the earth. But it didn't take him six days. See, it took him six days to show it to Moses. Right. Go ahead and read Exodus 24 again. Nine and 10. 
Yes, please. Okay, Exodus 24, 9. Then went yeah. up Moses and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. Mm -hmm. They saw the Elohim of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone. And look at that. There was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone. Why is that? Get Isaiah 66 and 1, and just stay right here. Because remember, this is Yahweh Elohim is Yahweh in shape and form, seen only in divine visions and revelations. Go ahead and read, please. Isaiah 66 and, I'm sorry, what did you say? Four? Six and one. Okay, okay thank I, you. I see the five-minute sign. All right, Isaiah 66 and one. Yes. Thus saith Yahweh, mm -hmm. the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. He Where is the house? <laughs> Where, Where is the house that you build unto me? Yes, yeah, he's that's his footstool. Right. Heaven, heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. That's why it's showing that under his feet was a paved work of a sapphire stone. And the cosmonauts went out and they saw the earth and they said the earth was looked like a big blue marble. Because that's showing you always letting them see what they see. Right. Yahweh lets us know what we know. These scientists, you know, they name things after themselves and they, because they discover so-called discover things, but Yahweh's just letting them find things for us right. so he can show us the witnesses and correlate it to the pattern. <laughs> See, that's why, why they're discovering so-called things is for us. See, that go in, you know how see, it says creation by the pattern mm -hmm. and creation by Yahweh Elohim. He is the pattern. Yeah. And that's why when you look at these days of creation, you'll see that they're broken down in a threefold configuration according to the tabernacle pattern. Because when he was up there in the mountain, mm -hmm. see, he showed, he took on shape and form as a tabernacle. He showed Moses this tabernacle pattern and he told him to build one in the wilderness, just like the one he saw in the mountain. Uh, we'll read this real quick and then I got to get off. Uh, let's see, Exodus 25, <laughs> I mean, Exodus 25 and 40, and then Hebrews 8 and 5. Okay. Exodus 25 and 40. Yes. And see that thou make them after their pattern, which was shown thee in the mount. Now, this is in everybody's Bible. This yeah. He's talking about this pattern that was shown to Moses in the mountain. I don't hear anybody else in the world talking about a pattern shown to Moses in the mount. It was hidden. Right. It, it's hidden. It was revealed to our founder who brought it to us. This pattern was showed to Moses in the mount. Now, real quick, go to Hebrews 8 and just start at 1. Eight. Okay. Hebrews 8 and 1. Yeah. Now, the things which... We have spoken. This is a son. Mm -hmm. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of yeah. the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which Yahweh pitched and not man. Now, see, why is Paul talking about a tabernacle? See, right. his, he got a divine vision and revelation from Yahweh, too. Mm -hmm. And so he's going to talk about this divine, this tabernacle pattern. Read on. Third verse. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is of necessity mm -hmm. that this man have somewhat also to offer. See, he's talking about Yahshua, the Messiah, the true high priest. Read on. Right. Fourth verse. For if he were on earth, he should not be a minute, should not be a priest, <laughs> seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law. Right who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. That's another Romans 1, 19 and 20, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. Read on. Right. As Moses was admonished of Elohim Lord. when he was about to make the tabernacle. Right. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shown to thee in the mount. See, that just confirms what, what happened with Moses. And yeah. it confirms what the founder taught us about this divine pattern of the universe. It's very important and it's a beautiful. And I thank Yahshua for allowing me to be a partaker of it and to share 
whatever bit I have to with you guys. I'm so thankful for the invitation and and peace in Yahshua the Messiah. I'll yield the floor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Rosemary Turner. I would like to thank all of our visitors that came out and joined us for our Zoom class tonight. And now I cordially invite our visitors and friends to come back and study with us. Class is held every Monday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. To our Zoom participants, please remain muted until the host has ended the YouTube broadcast. Now we will conclude class with our doxology coming from the last two verses of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our savior, through Yahshua, the Messiah, our sovereign, belong glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let the class say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. hallelujah.